March uh, 17, 2021 it is. And I am actually standing right in front of the Basilica if you want church. Maria's Church, St. Maria's Church, birth of St. Maria's Church, Basilica, this is how they named one. This is a beautiful church, really, really unique church. This church is, um, I remember they talked to me a lot about this church, I'm not going to go into this, but very, very unique church. You're about to find out why it's so unique church. What you see down there, that's a uh, city of the Novomis, like this, you can see it. And I'm going to tell you the like, same thing as they told me. They reminded me of whatever they brought me. Now they said to me, yeah, they said to me one factory right there, that's a good one. And then right there, another big one, that's a bad one. But there is more. To this than just good and bad and uh, it would pertain to both factories it's like this first of all I wouldn't do this at night time but it's something that's choking me already for about a month now uh, and I kind of feel that is pulling me down and so I decided to get over with, get rid of it, basically. Uh, it's, it's a really heavy issue. Uh, it's going to be another video, it's going to be a really heavy one. And it's about where Vladimir Putin got the money from, how the money dripped into the Putin's pocket. And I already indicated in my blog, on my new site, also Times, that money came to Vladimir Putin through Switzerland. There is a city, Thun, that's where the first payment, first deposit was done on his private banking account. But this kind of stuff, I will discuss in a video which I already have recorded probably even, maybe even three months ago. I have no idea. I know it's somewhere on a hard drive. I faced other issues and this was one of them that was extremely disturbing to me. This is the most disturbing issue. This is more disturbing than even probably many is gonna, are going to disagree because there were people that were literally killed, poisoned here in Slovenia, including my neighbors, family, so that Vladimir Putin could eventually get his deposits, money going flow cash that's why i reject it and i reject the theory of alexei navalny so much because they were like uh, pants and shirt you could almost say they were never together but they always were together whenever putin was in town it was also navalny in town in germany it was the same thing german government would not give under any circumstances navalny information about Putin if it was not for, you know, Russian government's approval. It's always the story about good and bad in Russia. You know, something really bad happens and then it's a savior that comes out and supposedly that, you know, it's like a rainbow all of a sudden that comes out of the clouds and everything is all of a sudden beautiful till something bad again happens. I don't like this. type of responsibility, type of accountability for actions which Russian state assumed upon itself when they created this model here. That's why I reject both of them. And it's got everything to do with uh, video this video here right now. This is a video about 
what exactly happened to me here in, in 95 and 96 here in Slovenia when I was brought is a video how far the Russian state, how far Russian state have gone uh, to basically create in me something like I could say like almost like a reflex type of You know, like reflex mean like if you would hit on a knee, a bow cap, and you would have leg jumping. The response, like body would give like automatically based on a certain um, nerve you would hit. So basically disallowing brain to actually process the thought answer because drugging up was not enough just to drug the person up as I realized in 95 it was not enough it was not enough to just drug me up and get the response they wanted to get basically in 1995 I was a knowledge like the worst of the worst I was I was drugged up brought here uh, already bad stuff happened in the US it's something I already have discussed about then I was brought here uh, things didn't go any better here through this case you know through this case allowing me to recollect a little memory about I'm gonna move because there's some people okay this is about what went on here I've learned a lot about my neighbors still the adventure about the neighbor that there was a lot I didn't know about I've learned a lot about psychiatrist who came to uh, basically pack me up in 2011 he came and accused me of I don't know violence whatever and they would come and pick me up and take me away basically to a psychiatric hospital this is the man who was involved here in 1995 along an individual from Ljubljana this individual from Ljubljana was if I go straight to the matter individual from Ljubljana was a translator professional translator who spent many years in Moscow he was a Russian speaking fluent Russian speaking Slovenian individual really Slovenian I don't know how many of you are familiarized with the year 1990 something like this maybe even as soon as the Soviet Union had fallen apart Soviet Union was taken from one day from the day one Soviet Union was taken over by the Russian Mafia you heard about the Russian Mafia you did you did heard about that I am sure you did pretty much there was really nothing that was left out of the Russian state out of the Russian state you would have uh, the remaining departments like state departments the names you would have and you would have a bunch of people that would run the state the country that were completely I think they were completely without any kind of uh, motivation and I would use the word motivation because the country was in a in a fall completely it was they didn't even take uh, MiG airplanes with them from Eastern Germany this is how bad this thing was and the Lada Samara Lada Samara was given almost like for free um, it was almost given like a giveaway if you if you read about a little bit about if you know something about Russia in 1995 here in the city of the Novo Mesto mafia Russian mafia appeared here gangsters appeared here 
one of which a Russian gangster was Vladimir Putin. Others that appeared along Vladimir Putin In 96, it was Sergei Shoigu who appeared. But in 95, there were some uh, real Russian gangsters that appeared here. Like one of the gangsters, I think, eventually, I think, was killed. It was shoot out, something like this. They killed, I don't know. Throughout this entire case, there were so many, many gangsters that were involved in this case. And what's interesting is every time Vladimir Putin I should say the Russian state would have one of those gangsters removed uh, whether he needs the urge to have him removed because it was a competition to him or whatever the reason might have been I don't know uh, he would always make sure that the gangster would make some kind of threat to me, something like this, so it would make me feel like he is doing this for me in that sense. This was very, very manipulative way to teach somebody drugged up of also of loyalty, also of blindness. He would just guide you uh, into a total oblivion, guidance. Uh, here in the city of the Novo Mesa, 1995, here, it was, there, there will be another two locations I'm going to take you to tonight. Like I said, I, I, can, I can't do this anymore. I can't go and wait, uh, contemplating doing this video. There were three things I figured out are going to happen. One thing is, I don't going to delay this, and it's going to get worse and worse with me because I'm, I'm not even in a sense of these videos. I, I got important stuff I could publish and benefit from within whatever i already published so many proofs about mk ultra but still i almost don't feel those are even important anymore uh, i'm i'm kind of fed up with it um basically losing kind of motivation to, to to get going even even for the cost of pointing out more proofs about forced unemployment that's pretty badass when they take away from you 30 years of life based on forced unemployment and you actually have a physical proofs about this kind of stuff. This, this kind of stuff is actually, you can imagine this thing is troubling me deeply. Like I said, this is troubling me more than any, than any other issue. But the second thing that can happen is I can forget about and pretend it never happened just push it aside way because it's a really uncomfortable one something of course it does not come in consideration and the third one basically is to get over with even at night time and go on with it it's, it's, it's just too much anyhow in other two locations I'm going to take you to this Russian mobsters gangsters because they did not speak not English they don't speak no Slovenian. They don't speak no Serbo-Croat. Later on, they assisted, they had Chetniks from Serbia, from Belgrade, they would come. And I don't believe it was solely on behalf of them that they would wanted to cook this kind of stuff, stuff I'm about to explain to you. This is the stuff that was eventually used. If you compare Croat, Bosnian, Serb population, physically in many areas of these three countries the variations are very little because the population is mixed and you would know which one is when you're drugged up which one is Serb which one is Bosnian which one is Croat whatever it is you know the one that makes the worst case about it is the one that is going to stick the image is going to stick to the to all of the three you, eventually you're not going to want to go back there no more no matter what because you don't know who is doing what and to tell you the truth 
when I was taken to the Bosnia and Herzegovina, and it was likewise in Croatia, they had people, literally Serbs, that would pretend to be Bosniaks, they would pretend to be a cause, and it would steer shit under presenting themselves as a cross, as Bosniaks and stuff like this, so that they would so they would get the response within the environment wherever I was taken, the one they eventually wanted on, on which they follow up right three, right here through Slovenia afterwards and so on. That's how they built. Now people in Bosnia knew what the hell went on with me when I was in Bosnia. Now people in Croatia in many cases did not know what the hell went on. Later on, it came to them. Yeah, but later on already was bad damage already done. The same likewise situation was between the Russians and Ukrainians. It's what how Vladimir Putin steered the war in Crimea and in Donetsk. It's basically eating the country from within. Having a foreign individual, you bring him in, and this individual is giving you not a compliments, he's giving you a really negative feedback. And you are actually asking yourself, is it even worth it for me to have independent Bosnia? Is it actually even worth it for me to, to have independent Croatia? They say, where is this guy? He's coming from, he's from Slovenia, but this also used to be Yugoslavia. Why is he watching us like this? Maybe it's better really that we go back into Yugoslavia. This is the type of stuff, or for Ukrainians for that matter, go back to under the Soviet Union. This is what, this is how Vladimir Putin did. Now his ways did not have any kind of limits. There was no ethics involved here in this stuff. There was no, there was no such thing as ethic or, you know, the crime basically was limitless. It was, it was just, there was no, it was just, there was no, there was no limits. There was no, no edges, no borders, no stop, no nothing. And it was endless. Anything that could be done to me, was make, mis make no mistake, done. It's not that it could be done, whatever, but it was done. And so I found myself here in the city of Nova Mesa with this translator. He finished in Moscow. It could have been that this guy was eventually even working on an embassy in a in a Russia in a Moscow he might have been I have no idea where how he was something that he was studying something like this he was there in year 1995 this man already spent a period Slovenian guy native from here from Ljubljana according to what I can recall this guy was there already for about at least five years between five and ten years so this is, I'm already giving you a description of an individual. This was a slim guy, dynamic guy. And boy, he lied, he lied. They would take me separately, separately away from, from what later on became Sveto Gradišar, psychiatrist involved in this MK Ultra case, the guy who hospitalized me in 2011. He came from, he supposedly went to the Berger family, to the neighbor, and then he would come to us. Then he created a total lie out of nothing that parents gave him, whatever, through the police department against me. The next thing they came, they took me away. Sveto Gradišar, this individual, I can already tell you, and I wouldn't know about this, if I, this was not. This guy is a member of a National Resistance Front of, of Slovenia, which member also I am. Just this is like an older generation that is... just devoted uh, to, this, to this type of... Uh, Slovenian partisan uh, liberation front movement individual is what uh, what he is at least this is what 
he would give without any kind of uh, second thoughts about it or whatever. That's what he claimed. You know, that's how he wanted me basically to pursue him as see him, his images. He wasn't present. He was, I think he was not present. But he, he did, he did create it a bad thing. On twice he created a really bad thing. But from the, completely from the beginning he was not. I don't think he was. And if he was, he was standing somewhere and watching all this. But I don't think he was. Other, beside him, there was another here guy from Novo Mesto. One, and then another one joined. So it was three of them. Miro Berger, neighbor, the guy who would travel to Belgrade almost every week when there was a Yugoslavia. He was not present. Miro Berger, individual, was the only individual who wanted to stop this at once in year 1995. When it all started, this guy would come out and say, uh, really, uh, he said, Bustian, he said, do you want me to stop this? I'm going to stop this. I'm going to get the police. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He did not know about what went on. Because he was at work. He still was employed. And scary thing about it was that they would bring me to, let's say, to a, to memorials. I'm going to demonstrate to you partisan memorials, memorials dedicated to the partisan movement. Prior to this, they would already start to brainwash on the Nazi issues and just start to accuse me of the stuff that I am a Nazi, that I am I don't know what, in 1995 already. Insult me, threaten me, right here, brought from the United States of America, from Miami to Slovenia, to independent Slovenia. Yeah, I was in a first generation military here in Slovenia. Very proud too to serve. In this city here, in my city, in my birth city, at a memorial of the partisans what can I tell you? My mother's brother was killed by the Germans in a battle with Germans. He was a partisan. He was killed in an action. My grandfather, that's a father from my father, he was a number one, one number one he was for the entire city. He was in occupied city of the Novo Mesto, the city that you see here. During the World War II, all well, the city that you see here, it's quite a big city, you know. Uh, you might not see this, it's a big city. It's quite a big city. When Italians occupied this place, when Germans occupied this place, he was the one who ensured that partisans in Kocheuje that partisans in the area would have a necessary anywhere from medications to all kinds of supplies. It was taken to them. He carried, he was a secretary in the city, in an occupied city, and supported the national resistance, partisans in the hills. His hat, hat of the entire family was 24-7, you would not know when they're going to come to pick you up. At one point, they listed them as good to go to the concentration camp, to Germany. And it was the uncle who collaborated with the Germans, his brother, his own brother, that stopped deportation to Germany, to concentration camp, literally, or Poland. I don't know where they wanted to load. And my father and my grandfather and aunt and everything, they were ready to take them out. So I have a Russian mobsters, gangsters, 
talking to me about me being Nazi, I don't know what kind of stuff. Drugged up, brought from the U.S., humiliated on a, on a, on a memorial of the partisans, pushed around. Just one Slovenian guy was present. Others were Russian gangsters. This translator. And this stuff repeated. It went once. Second time, Sveto Gradišar appeared, Slovenian guy, along. This is a psychiatrist. They were not doing this kind of stuff. They didn't come to pick you up to the U.S. without somebody that eventually can assist needs. All through Sveto Gradišar was just getting into this business back then. This was the first psychiatrist involved from Slovenian side into this case. What exactly happened? Was it the second time? I'm not even sure the second time he was present. But at one point he was present. And they lied too. Eventually it was once they humiliated, lied. It was twice they couldn't break my will with the lies. And maybe it was a third time they humiliated me, pushed me around, threatened me, that I exploded. And drugged up as I was, I wanted to know really more about the partisans. This is how, excuse me, fucked up I was with these drugs. Then I cursed whatever they praised and that's exactly what they wanted to obtain from me. Let me explain. The first thing is to get confirmation from the victim on something you could absolutely not get under any circumstances otherwise. The victim at this point, I did not even know what the fuck I said. Once I said that, they became really, really clear about what I said, against whom I said, and so on and so forth. And this is how they start to build against me the case. The psychiatrist appeared. That's why I don't know how much this guy was involved from completely from very beginning on this thing. I am not going to give him any kind of credit until I'm going to know exactly what's going on with him. He knew, he saw it, he knows the whole thing from beginning to the end, and he's going to tell this or he's going to have hell. That I promise you today, Sveto Gradisha, if you're not going to tell this, I'm going to ruin your life. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy you. I will destroy you. I am telling you this right now. You're not going to witness about this. Sveto Gradishar eventually brought two other guys, like I said, right here from Novo Mesto City. One guy was oftentimes with him more often than the other one. Maybe he was afraid. I don't know. I don't know what went on. And it would happen that I already would go along with them. And they would start to interrogate what made me really, really strange because it, now there was no more this Russians with me doing this gangsters doing this stuff to me, but it was already locals that have started to brainwash me. Why am I against the partisans and this and that? Rather than fucking help me out, they started to ask stupid questions. They wanted to get, in other words, more feedback, more no from me. Yeah? So they started to build some personality that 
like I said, otherwise they could not under any circumstances. This is how much Sveto Gradisha has in this thing. Mero Berger find out about my views about the partisans and stuff, and he was disturbed. The thing about it is that I realized that as much as he was disturbed and he was uh, angry about this older man who liked me because I grew up with his son, you know, with, with two of his sons, he just, um, there was no way I could possibly can explain him, that I could explain to him what they have done to me, but I had a character like this that already, I already told you about that. This I never told them that I'm gonna come to Moscow and destroy them for this. This I never told them. I told them for other things about this girl who was here also a Russian girl that did all kinds of problems that I'm gonna get her, that I will go, all of them, that I'm gonna go to Moscow and get them. But I did promise myself I will do this. One day that eventually I will do this. This day would never come really because of following. As years went by, Years didn't even go so by, but every time when they would get all these events, what they would do, every one of these events, what they would do is they would, every time they would video record this thing. And it was the first occasion they would get nothing. It was the second occasion they would get nothing. It was the third occasion they finally got something from me. I don't know how far they have managed to push the third time with brainwash, with a torture, with a humiliation at a memorial of the partisans here in the city of the Novo Mist. But the guy told me, the Rus Russian guy told me, mobster told me, we already got something. The th it was the fourth time they got more, and it was the fifth time they got more, and it was the sixth time they got more. And so they developed, like I told you at the beginning, like a reflex statements from me right at the memorials they wanted to obtain this once they have a video recorded whatever they wanted to obtain they have used people like a mero berger they have used the people like people that were devoted to national resistance movement keeping a tradition of the national resistance movement and they would pass them along videos video recorded material so that those could see themselves in, in an individual who filmed this thing against me. So this is how they have created wider and wider circle. This is how the Moscow does it. This is how the Moscow does it. This is how it's done in Russia. I said to myself, this is how it's done in Russia then. In 96, it became clear that Serbs also appeared and it, was, it became like really, really, really impossible. You had Milosevic here, you had Karadzic here, you have main war criminals here that would come to the city of Nova Mesta. The factory Renault, where I was placed on an assembly line, yes, they want to get me to know workers so that workers supposedly can help me out with MK Ultra. They would say, stop, stop, stop. In the morning hours, we have to go. We have to go where? Where do we go? Well, we go here, this is a place here, to Tashkagara. Now they are working, people are at work. And so they would bring me here in the mornings here to this place. This was one of the memorials here. This is a very important place, this beautiful Basilica, Mary Basilica, Basilica of Mary, the Saint Mary. Richard. This really unique, beautiful place. This is where people, locals, 
who no longer could tolerate this Nazi occupation here came together and for the Dolenska region these were the partisans of the second battalion after the mass they created a political meeting in 1942 um, in other words, the people that would come here, there were also partisans that would come here to this, to this mass here, to, to this basilica, to this church, and would discuss their views against Germans, against German occupation of Slovenia, against crimes Germans committed against this little Slovenian nation. And they vote resistance to one. This is a very, very important place. This here, this here, this memorial here, this one was made in 1988, or well, about seven years earlier than what I was brought here. When people would work, they would be working, they would, they would work in the factories. They would bring me here too also to this location, but the main location, our location we want to take it to, and it would start to, to humiliate, lie, and brainwash for what I told you they wanted to develop. And they did. This is how they were doing it. This was one of the memorials where I was brought so that they could lie, so that we're going to get now to that issue as years went by. So that Vladimir Putin, in 1998, when he was here, he would, he would go walk here. They would come here and they would walk here. He was not alone, though. Here, there were people from all over the world that would come. It was all kinds of politicians. Buckingham Palace was here. Not only Pope. German politicians, French politicians, anything you want. Everything was here to this place. These are vineyards. This, this is a beautiful vineyard area. A uh, few places so unique, so beautiful like this one here. He told me in 1998, as we were walking down, on a sunny, bright light, sunny day. Hot day. Probably at 12.30. Before one o'clock. We were heading back on a lunchtime. Home. He told me, thanks to you, Okay, thanks to you, I'm going to conquer the world. We're going to do something really, really beautiful. Thanks to you, I'm going to conquer the world. Okay, thanks to, literally, thanks to your stupidity. Thanks to, thanks to, thanks to you. No, nothing you can do, nothing this, nothing that. Yeah, this is how they were, they developed a collection of lies and used different all kinds of channels to redistribute uh, lies to project views to society under the table, literally, in which they, certain people wanted to see themselves in, believe into, And that's just the way it is. People did not know anything about what's coming next. The Ukrainian people, all I can tell you is that wherever I went, uh, the only thing that will happen is the hell broke out. 
um, it was violence, I would get a lot of death threats all the time. Yeah. It was nothing but a death threats. And on these death threats, you know, I have a character like this. That I, I responded them back even with the death threats. You know, I, I was just like this. And many times it started with the pushing, then it started with me waving hands and trying to hit and found myself on the floor with other guys on top of me. And sometimes it was all kinds of situations, drugged up. Um, but whenever I would leave the city, it was all kinds of stuff that would happen once I would leave the city and nothing good really. In Polish, in, in Ukraine, they used to call me Massacre for a good reason, too. Massacre. Uh, probably you don't need the translation. Uh, the personality, my personality, I wouldn't say that one differed from a real personality. Uh, but hell, nothing had to do with the real personality. It was just a personality that uh, it was a personality created by the politicians for convenience, for what they want for their agenda. I mean, this is the problem is that when the politicians like this accent the importance, your importance, regardless of how stupid you are, well, the more stupid, the more you become important. If this is what they need, it becomes disturbing to the disturbing degree so that that people would be even more hurt that people would be even the more the people were innocent that you know, bad stuff no really nothing 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 good as the years went by ukrainian people who took completely side against me you know it's, it's like in poland i can tell you ukrainian people i wouldn't know this stuff unless you would be, you would know this stuff only if you would be Ukrainian, from Ukraine, and you would be in Poland in, I don't know, 95, 96, 97, 98, and so on. Otherwise, you wouldn't know any of this stuff. It's impossible you would know this. But they felt like not exactly home in Poland. And they felt that Russians were closer to them than anybody else. They did not really like Polish too much. They didn't like me, hell no. Because to me, the difference, I did not know what the hell went on. Uh, you know, if you told me that you were Ukrainian, I understood. Now, how long did I understood? I understood until the trucks were too strong to know even who you are again then I wouldn't be sure anymore whether you're Russian or you're Ukrainian or whatever the hell would be. As with the same thing as it applied here to Croatia and to the Bosnia and so on. They totally decided, they knew who Vladimir Putin was. And they totally sided with the Vladimir Putin. Not the people in Crimea who observed Vladimir Putin whenever negotiations took place in Crimea to more and more and more observe Crimea from the aspect that, you know, it's like you would have, I don't know, uh, <laughs> that you would have a Hitler come to your country and he would just look how beautiful is your country and he would talk to his men that he wants this already like this and stuff like that. This is how it was, it was scary scary to the degree that Crimean people, when I would walk in Crimea with Americans, with the British, if a Buckingham Palace, Charles, they were asking Charles to please, they were scared as hell. And Charles would give them a guarantee that nothing ever is going to happen to them and this is going to remain a part of Ukraine and so on. He lied. He totally, totally lied. He had no control with what he was doing about what went on, nothing. And it's how Crimea was lost, literally. It was a pure evil 
that walk whenever we would have those meetings in Crimea. It was an accident just waiting to happen, just a matter of time before the whole Crimea is going to go under in hands of another country. Once that thing happened, once the war broke out, forget about Crimea, but in Donetsk and stuff like that, oh, all of a sudden the Ukrainian people understood my point of view. All of a sudden they started to grasp a little bit more about me. But until then, Ukrainian people in Poland, they hated me. They were like, uh, they, they simply hated it. They, they couldn't stand me because for me, it's with what went on in Russia, in, in Russia, in, in Moscow, I, I, they, they throw me inside of the jail. American citizen thrown inside of the jail in Moscow, brought to the Russia, drugged up, thrown inside of the jail, tortured over there, told how you're going to be just like this, you're never going to come out and stuff like this. No, don't think about this stuff. I have audio recordings, I'm going to prove you. I wasn't there only, I was in Siberia too. I was in Pol where the prisoners camps, where I was threatened also that I'm not going to come out that they're going to lock me in, that's where people disappear and stuff like that. You don't know nothing about the places that Vladimir Putin took me, what Vladimir Putin did to me. But, you know, that stuff is not so horrific as crazy it might seem to be when compared to this stuff here. When you're brought to your country, to your city, at a memorial of the partisans, of which part your family definitely is, fits into category and humiliated like a, like a shit, like you're not even from here, like you're some kind of outsider, like you're nobody, by some mobster, by some gangster from really completely other part of the world, to express myself properly. An individual, I'm talking about from Ljubljana, couldn't lie no more. He lied sometime from the beginning. He translated, he did exactly what he told him to do. But at the time, he no longer could. Sometimes in 98, after Putin got his video recordings, after he got all the shit together he needed to convince probably people in Moscow, I have no idea what he was doing, whom the hell he was convincing, what the hell he was doing. This man from Ljubljana, Slovenian guy, he already had a lot of second thoughts about this. He didn't feel good about it. By sometimes 2000, I think he was done. He didn't want to do it no more. So it was a Kirka pharmaceutical company right here. That's why I don't like to talk about which, which company was good, which one's bad, and this or that. They got their translator involved in it, and he would took for the Russians from there. He would go and he would start the system. But in the meanwhile, the Serbs got somebody who, they got their people learn Russian and accommodate with all kinds of stuff. Miro Berger, as far as Miro Berger, my neighbor, <laughs> sometimes in 1999, he said to me, he said, he said, now I will retire. Now I will learn more about, I will be learn, I will be able to be more around you and I will learn more about this. Oh, well, I was saying to myself, my friend, oh, he could be my father easily. I said to myself, well, you know, I'm already lost, <laughs> uh, but, all right, it's good. It's it's nice that you're thinking about me. I was saying this to myself because you see the thing about this MK Ultra is you can't say anything. You just you're also not allowed to say. You know that's another thing. I was it was also times when I would say 
and you're not allowed to say. They, it feels like, it felt, it definitely felt like they wanted you to stay like stupid, like dumb, like dumb, like they didn't want you to, like completely motionless, like without feelings, stupid. And so you would say top, insensitive, brute in that sense. They want it. This stuff all goes in hand to the people like this. They want a person like this. Because being sensitive, having an ability to demonstrate sensitive, ability to express yourself, that's what they didn't want. So, I hope I did explain a little bit about how this thing went here. I am a little bit cold right now. Uh, if it's going to be something for me to add, I definitely have to go to a few other locations. I will record. Maybe there is a few more things I want to do this time since I'm here. For you to, for me to demonstrate to you other locations. Um, but I think I did a really good job. Now, probably if it was a daytime, it would be a little bit better. But I'm quite satisfied in respect to this case I have made tonight. You know what? This Slovenian musician I'm going to demonstrate to you when it all started here. This is when I mentioned to you about this, how they passed these tapes to the people, how they we would they would bring me here um, from this from the from the place where they would take me to the to the factors and stuff like this. This is this is a memorial they have dedicated to him. Look. I hope you can see it. You can probably barely see it somehow, but that's his name. And it says here Lois. His name it says it's Lois Slock, and year you have 1932 and 2011. So you have year of his birth, 1932 and 2011. And it says here, Nikkei Kreisen is on Ayodva, Maya Tershkagara. Yeah, this is a well known Slovenian musician. He really. I just say, uh, love to think about this country, about beauties of this countries, of this country. Lucky enough to do something like this, something that not everybody had the opportunity to celebrate. Uh, I, for instance, I wasn't. And it just happened so that sometimes in 1990, even maybe 1996 already, 97 definitely, he was present here. He was present here. He was present here along this group of the group of these guys here. A group of the guys who did place this memorial here to the partisans. This this memorial here. Let me see here. This this memorial. I don't know how you can see this well, but he was here and he find out about this. He he felt very strong about this this church. This church is very, very this basilica is very very accepted. If you would like, even even in the circles of the communists, okay, if you want to call them like this, I wouldn't even call them like that. I don't think somebody like Berger, let's say, uh, although he was going to Belgrade every week, I was really some kind of uh, fanatic or something like this. I think he was like more like free enterprise communist, something like in China, basically in that sense, you know, that he had a social justice oriented. Uh, 
he wanted to have a productive communism, let's put it this way, socialism rather than uh, in that sense. Uh, and so the problem with him, the problem with these guys too, I have to criticize that, was that these videos they passed down Even seeing me the way I was treated here, mistreated. The whole thing was based on lies. They saw this with their own eyes. They would start to participate to the circle of the people they would invite. And project their vision about something completely unreal as per as this, you know? Is you're not supposed to be like this, you know, this is this is not right, this and that, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. And it was barking again. It was barking. They would bring me here. I would wear some sure there's something like this i would really feel shitty drugged up in in a in a, in, in in some white shirt where it's really 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 uncomfortable <laughs> i also grew more kilos and I, I suffered depression uh i was depressed away in miami uh basically married to an older woman trying to get my documents together so i can survive somehow over there not having a good time really for me time was tough trying to survive really and here you had a, a russian mafia gangsters they would assemble themselves to have a good time to have a good time with the ladies to celebrate here drink wine meet directors heroes of the companies collect the bribes that was a big one money put this in envelopes drive back to belgrade enjoy really there was no end me being humiliated really in a memorial to so the partisans i resented this so bad boy and so these guys made a really really bad impression when they when they would appear here and they would say how they this proud and this and that and look yeah you know i said to myself you know the real man don't talk to the man to the real man when he's drugged up i'm not even taking you seriously basically just like that i didn't even care about what they blah, 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 they barked and this and that sometimes in like probably 99 something like that Loisa Slack and again group, they were like uh, like some kind of mean dogs or something like that. Like you would have like, a, you know, like you would have a house dog, let's say, and it would be a dog like in the village, let's say. They would go and just jump on you like from the corner or something and tear your pants apart or something like that. That's exactly, they would bring me here and they would start to bark on me and stuff. But sometimes, probably 99, something like this, maybe 2000, maybe something like this. There was a group of guys from here, right from here, around here. And when they started to have a good time again, barking on me, it was a few of guys that told them to shut up. They learn, people learn about this stuff. Now you have a real guys from around here. And this was a really, really my surprise. They told them, they told this musician, this Louis Slug, they told him, shut up, man, because you're not going to even walk a light from here if you're not going to keep your mouth shut. And they told the same thing to the other guys. We're going to rip you apart. You're not going to come out of here alive. You're not going to come back here no more. And it was the first time that their tongue stuck glued and it was like shock. 
And in the middle of this bullshit of this blah, 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 it was like, he, he said to the other guy, he said, did, did you hear what he say? And the, the other guy wanted to say that something like that it was signed to the other guy that he would accept it. But these guys didn't take shit. They told him, they told him, listen, they told him, you don't see him, that he is drugged up, that he is, that this, what, what, what's done to him, the way he's treated and stuff. You don't, you don't see this? They told him, you don't understand any of this? You don't see it? You don't see it? They told him, you pick up your stuff. And we see you one more time doing this kind of stuff. None of you is going to go alive from here. Literally like this. You understand? It was a time, these guys, it was like a, like a group, like a little gang of these guys understood like seriousness of, of the situation. I told you in 2000, the guy from Ljubljana was gone. He didn't want to be on the picture no more. He became very uncomfortable. But sometimes in 2000, I don't know, maybe 2003, maybe something like this. Loisa Slock, a few years later, he didn't feel comfortable anymore about the stuff he was doing, talking to me like this, nor did other guys. They apologized to me, all of them. Loisa Slack felt about this really, really, really bad. Eventually, he asked me to forgive him. I was angry. I was so angry. I was so bitter. My neighbor knew this, that I'm not, this is not pertaining to me, this stuff, but it was like that I'm eventually powered by the anger. It was the anger that powered me. This is one of the things that once you get me going, I think anybody for that matter that is worth something that if you insult person with the issues like this and you get him going, you create a person that is powered by the anger that you, you, this person is just had so much resentment in him that he will not let go no matter what. It doesn't matter. I didn't. I did not, I did not forgive them anything. I even told them here that um, he died in 2011, he was here right there. They were still asking me to forgive him and this and that. I forgive him today, I forgive them today. The situation have gone as far as people, local people, here gesturing that memorial right there that you see will be forgotten, will be pushed aside like in one never existed. There will be a new memorial dedicated to the partisans here. The memorial that you see right there is like memorial, it doesn't exist, but it does exist. These people do matter. And this political Bidenness does have uh, many different faces. You could see yourself in a many different characters. People have seen themselves in a many, many different characters. The main thing, however, to this little country is that we as a people have to stick together. If we wouldn't stick together, we wouldn't even be here no more. So. Through it all, one way or the other, are these brave guys that are from here? For me, they are just really, really heroes because you have no idea how that make me feel that there's actually somebody that stood up like this for me. And these guys here that paid respect to the partisans, to, to, to the tradition, 
everybody should because this is this is what part we are this is why we are here i think it helped one side and the other to understand who we are and like i said i don't wish to separate either side create some sides or something like this i just want uh, for us all to stick together to one another because we are a small people just already as we are we are a very little people we are two million people here and so and that's basically all i wanted to say about this one this basilica this church interesting enough is managed by the is here from Otochets, who's priest. Now that's really even better. <laughs> He's from Bela Kraina. There is this little road, little road that goes from Croatia to actually from Bosnia, from Serbia through Bosnia and through Croatia eventually to Slovenia. And there were two priests there. As you come through the border, there is this little village. And I'm talking to you all this stuff from the memory from year 1995. When I drove right there through with Donald Trump, with the limousine, we traveled to this little, little road. And there is this beautiful church, the church in 1995, I don't think it was that beautiful, but one time it went through, boy, the priests, the people of this village, they have made this ch beautiful like church, like you would go in the houses, you would go and then you would see this beautiful building. And I would say, what is this beautiful building always? Oh, stop let's see this beautiful building and it always they were laughing this is church Sebastian this is church now you're in Slovenia and in this church there was this I think older priest who I think I'm even afraid to say what happened to him and it was this younger priest who I believe went to Ljubljana and then from Ljubljana, he returned back to long time ago, my friend, back to Bela Kraina. And from Bela Kraina in 2012, he came right here to Otochets, literally because of me. That's who manages this church here. So let's go to other locations and uh, we're going to go from there. Yeah, this gentleman, this priest involved in MK Ultra, uh, knows everything. Well, everything not, but a lot about me from 1995. He was really, really angry at one point at me. Not only at one, he, quite a few times. It's nothing with you, Sebastian. It's nothing with you. When are you going to start doing stuff and this and that? Oh, my God. I think personally. 95, 96, 97, as they insisted me. In 97, in the 98, Angela Merkel said, I'll get a half a billion dollar in Zakopane. 97, if I can prove MK Ultra case and this and that, that I should go to the computer when I go to Miami and do the video and da 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 da. It was used to destroy me. In 1998 is when Putin stated, we're going to do something, this and that and tra la la. And then you already know how it all followed. Um, it wasn't pretty. 
and me being in the middle of all this, seeing this whole thing, how the thing went on over the course of the time, I believe today that 96, 97, 98 were actually designed to destroy me, literally, through psychiatry. I don't think I would ever make it. Today, when I think about what happened in 95, in, a, in a memorials of the partisans, I told you I took, it took me about one month to come here and start talking to you about this stuff, how difficult this thing is for me. If I'd start talking about this in 96, 97, 98, I was not anywhere even near as fluent. I was not such a speaker as I am today, nor was I as fluent, capable to explain what went on. And worse, and it's why I survived. It's why you see me today. I was without witnesses I gained over the course of the time. You have no idea how many people know about this case. China, India, <laughs> Japan, Africa, all over the Africa, South America. Vladimir Putin, all these politicians who started something, they just didn't have any more. What it easily would take in 96, 97, 98, they didn't have what it took, take, to make me disappear. That meaning that I gained a lot of witnesses. More and more and more people got involved in it, the more and more chances I got to survive. This is why you see me today. This is why also I couldn't do anything in 96, 97, 98. Money, money is a great motivation, but in this case, money was just a trap. If I would go for that money in 96, 97, 98, and so on, I wouldn't make it anywhere. It was a trap. 